That's right. Welcome in, folks, to a Notre Dame one. But did you have any fun? Edition of the Always Irish Show. As always, you can find the program on YouTube. Do it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. Helps me out. Notifications on that way. You'll be alerted every time a new episode drops. Twitter. Search bar. Always Irish. Rat. Always Irish Inc. Emails. Always Irish. ND at gmail.com. Audio only. Anywhere you want me. You can get me. Call in line. Monday morning. 312-900-8815. Give Always Irish a ring, okay? Fighting Irish Wire. Make it a part of your daily Notre Dame web surfing routine. Fighting Irish Wire. Break it all down, including some articles from yours truly. So, let's start here. Notre Dame plays a home game. In a beautiful, warm weather, unseasonably warm, nice, pretty day. The leaves are changing colors. All of that, all of that in play. You get a 23-point win. And I am left feeling almost nothing. Almost nothing. Wins should feel better than this. Wins should feel better than this. That is my number one takeaway from the Notre Dame UNLV game. Wins should feel better than this. And when they don't, it's a sign that you have some real issues. Um, But this did not feel like a win. It felt like a partial relief, like more of a relief kind of but I'm still uncomfortable with so much of what I saw, but you won. But it's wrapped into the tapestry of the bigger picture where the season's already ruined. Wins shouldn't feel like this. And I know I'm not the only one that, that I know I can't be the only one that feels what I feel. Maybe I just don't know what to call it. Maybe it's just called... You won a game, but it doesn't matter because your season's already ruined. And we're not used to this the last handful of years. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. You know, if, you, if you're in the playoff hunt, you only have one loss, and you play this game exactly the same way with the same score, we're all more upbeat about it because you're building to something. You're still in the mix for the playoff with one loss, theoretically, like, New Year's six, like maybe that's what it all comes down to. It it just it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But a 23 point win on a beautiful fall day in sunny South Bend can't feel like this. It can't. So I don't know how to put it in words exactly, but I know you guys felt it too. Yeah, we won and kind of won by a lot, but I didn't feel good. I didn't feel good. And you know why? Because I know what really good football looks like, and we don't play it. That's it, folks. I know, and so do you, what really good high-end level college football looks like. We do not play it, and we are not close. We don't play it, and we're not close. And for that reason, this win wrapped into all that feels unfulfilling. It feels like empty calories. And I hate it. I hate it. But when a win feels how this one feels, it's just a sign you're in the middle of some struggles. It just feels hollow. It feels a little empty. Borderline meaningless. Unless you lost it, then it, then it means more in a reverse way. But like, uh, it's just such a bad spot to be. I just hate where we're at. And even in a 23 point win, we should have had 75 points. I am not joking. We should add over 50 by halftime. And usually it's like, 
fans of teams will exaggerate, or even I have a history of exaggerating things for a fact. But we were dominating field position the entire first half, had our regular drives on offense, and then had multiple block kicks putting us right on the goal line. Notre Dame should have a real offense, has over 50 points by half time against that team. It's just, it's so blah and so frustrating. It just, it drives you crazy. It just, it drives, it drives you crazy. And this cannot be, here's the other thing I need to address right damn now. This is not going to turn into one of those, just be glad any win is a good win for like type deals. No, 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 no. That lowers the bar so much for Marcus. Way below the level of talent he inherited. No. No. I am not letting any Notre Dame Dame fan change that bar to where now we're just glad we beat UNLV and you can't ask any questions. No. Hell no. 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 Marcus did not inherit elite, but he inherited a bar that is justifiably higher than just be glad we beat UNLV. You can't look for anything more than that. No. That lowers the bar to where, like, Kelly inherited the program. No. So don't let anybody tell you that. We're not going there. That's insulting to everybody. And it lowers the bar way too much for what was inherited. It wasn't great, but it wasn't low enough to just be glad you beat UNLV. No. That can't be the bar. Don't let anybody tell you it is. Also, horrible peacock experience. Listen, I don't know if it depends if you have a great internet stream or whatever. I stream a radio show four days a week with no interruptions. I think my Wi-Fi is perfect. No lags. Pay for faster Wi-Fi for the streaming I need. No issues. Yesterday, it cut out. It stopped. It buffered. It lagged. It was clunky in and out of breaks. It skipped where I was in the stream. Awful. Awful. Bad. Second rate, low level effort. Um, Bad. Bad. It did not help my feelings around this whole game. Having Peacock, you, the other thing, when you're in Peacock on your TV, you can't just flip over to a game on ESPN and see the score during our commercial break. You got to exit out of Peacock. That takes forever. Then find the channel. Then by the time you do that, you got to log back into Peacock for our game. I hate everything about it. It's a failure. I hate everything about it. It's a failure. Forcing it on people is low rate. Uh, I feel like Jack's get bent over by NBC. Amateur hour in the booth, literally amateur hour in the booth. The Peacock stream was not smooth, did not work smoothly. Inconvenience for everybody, awful. So I am done with NBC. I don't care. Don't, I don't care. I'm done with them. Find another partner. They're worried about the NFL. Notre Dame's second rate to them, and it shows The product is disappointing, and I don't like it, okay? So, Peacock, total failure. I had problems all day. Having to log back in, it would just freeze, cut out of Peacock, go back to TV in the middle of the game. So, awful delivery. I don't like the torture of being forced to do it, make it optional. It's bad. Amateur hour in the NBC booth. It's a second-rate product with a second-rate TV partner right now. Okay? That's what I've decided. So, but usually after a win, Notre Dame wins, you want to sit back, crack a couple beers, watch the other teams play, root against Brian Kelly, whatever you want to do, root against Harbaugh, you know, and and I got to admit, 
it wasn't fun last night. I turned on Halloween, watched Michael Myers stab 90 people over this. It's not fun. It's not fun. Yeah, Notre Dame won, but it was just blah, whatever. And then I turn on the TV and I see teams all over the country running exciting offenses. I see quarterbacks I've never heard of running good offenses in rhythm, hitting guys in stride. You know, a guy's open for a touchdown pass, actually hitting them all over. I see creative, modern, efficient offense, excitement, I all over. Not us. Not us. It's so frustrating. Every time I see a team with a quarterback I've never heard of, and right away I know he's he would do better in our offense than what we have, I can't handle it. It just wasn't fun watching other games. It's just a constant reminder that we don't have what they have. So maybe that's immature of me, but I can't help it. Every one of these games I watch, I see an offense better than ours. It's hard to take, folks. It's hard to take. And and the Brian Kelly thing, I get it. He won a top 10 game yesterday. I'm taking heat from the LSU people. Listen, guys, this is not, do you wish Kelly was still here and we're stuck in what we're in right now? Like, those are not the only options. I could be glad Kelly's wrong or gone and I can be glad Kelly's gone and frustrated with where we're at right now. Without that meaning, I want Kelly back. God, the people are so short-minded with this stuff. Small-minded, like it has to be all one or all the other. I cannot want Kelly back and also be mad we're not better right now. Those are the only options aren't. We're not great right now. I wish Kelly was here. No, that is not my only option. So I'm glad Kelly's gone and I'm frustrated and mad with where we're at. That doesn't mean I want Kelly back. Those are not the only options. Quit boxing me in. Nobody wants to hear it. No one wants to hear it. I don't want to hear myself say it, but it's true. No one wants to hear it, but Brian Kelly is a huge part of the reason we're in these troubles. Mismanagement of the quarterback room, allowing the wide receiver situation to go sideways on you. Those are Brian Kelly issues. No one wants to hear it because it comes off as excuse-making Blaming the guy that's not even in the same state when our game's going on for bad play. So I get why no one wants to hear it. And when you go down that path in a Twitter debate, you're going to get roasted for blaming the old guy when he's not even here. Kelly knows what he left. Kelly knows damn well what he left because he was a part of building the nightmare. Kelly knew that quarterback room was going to be bad, even if Buckner was healthy. And he knew what was coming down the road at wide receiver. Kelly is an idiot in certain ways. This isn't one of them. Looking out for his own ass isn't an area Kelly's bad at. That's an area he's good at. So he knew damn well what he allowed to come and happen was going to roost and got the hell out of Dodge. So... Kelly is a big part of this issue. By default extension, that makes Reese a part of this as well. So I get it sounds like sour grapes blaming Brian Kelly. He was the architect of our biggest problems right now. He was architect one. Architect 1B is still here. And he needs to be dealt with too. So... Here's what I've decided and where I'm at with all this. I have very differing levels of patience for different things inside the program right now. I have a lot more goodwill and patience left for Freeman than I do for Tommy, for example. Under Freeman, I want to see him get two to three years of his own recruiting 
and further down his coaching staff. See where we're at. Tommy, I have no patience right now. I'm done with. I, I can't do it, you guys. I can't do it. It's There's too much evidence that the offense and the quarterbacks have been too bad for too long with not good enough development for too long. I am I have no patience at all for any more ugly Notre Dame offense. And I got news for me. That's what we're going to get the rest of the year. And it isn't going to help when you look at the games coming up. You think we're frustrated in a win. The, ne- the end of this season, it's going to be interesting. Let's just put it at that. The way we play and the, what we got left. Woo! Whoa. I need a Rogaine membership ASAP. Holy cow. Could get ugly, folks. So you can go over all the yards, all the points, all of that from the UNLV Notre Dame game. And I still know this. Our offense is not good. It is not good. It's not close to being good. You can't even see real good offense from where we're at. It's sickening. Sorry. Even with all those points we scored, I say that. Because I know what I'm looking for. This ain't it. I know what I'm looking for. This ain't it. So we could go over all that, the yardage disparity and everything we did. I'm just not interested. It's not the most interesting part of this discussion, breaking down who had more yards, fancy UNLB or Notre Dame. Not an interesting discussion. I don't even blame Pine for any of this. He shouldn't even be playing to begin with. Sorry. I am not trying to be mean. Uh, I don't even blame Pine for some of the physical mistakes he makes because that's what a quarterback his size does or with his skill set or what his capabilities are. I'm sorry. The guy's smaller than me, and he's quarterback in Notre Dame. That shouldn't even happen as a backup. I'm dead serious. It shouldn't even happen as a backup. You need a guy... You need to stock the wide receiver room with guys with more natural physical gifts and stature than this. Sorry. So start there. Go all the way back. Why do you have a, why do you have a guy smaller than me that you're interested in recruiting to Notre Dame? I don't get it. You knew he didn't have a big arm. You knew he wasn't fast. You wanted him anyways. I don't understand it. Maybe it's the best you could get. I don't, but that's a problem too. All problem roads lead back in the same direction with this talk, if you haven't noticed. So it's like, well, you know, don't blame Tommy. Wait till we get better quarterbacks in here. Tommy's been a part of that. The recruiting, the the development, and the retention has been horrific, horrible. F, fail, fail. Tommy's been there. He's the common line. Common thread. Fail. No one can tell me it's not an F. Recent quarterback retention, development, and recruiting. Fail. Nowhere near good enough. Fail. So Tommy's not some innocent bystander. Oh, he's dealing with the backup. You know, that's not his fault. No, no, no. He wanted all these guys in the mix that aren't elite. That's a problem at the beginning. Forget the... The development and retention, who they're recruiting isn't good enough either. It's a fail across the board. None of it's good enough in that room. None of it is good enough in the quarterback room. What's going on? He is firmly on the hot seat. Every road points back to him. From Kelly, from now, the common road with all that quarterback points to him. I do not know. You could say that's not fair. I don't care. Logically, that is the common thread. Is it not? It is. All right? You got Syracuse and Clemson next. So here, if you watch those two play, Syracuse, look out. That ain't going to be an easy ball game in that dome. You better be ready to play, and you better be better than we've been. So, hey, You want to salvage this season? Beat Syracuse, beat Clemson, beat USC, and everybody will feel a lot better about this. 
I'm dead serious. You lose all three of them. All bets are off. Your recruiting class, uh, everything. So you have a lot on the line here without having a lot on the line because of what you did earlier in the year, if that makes sense. You have a lot on the line and nothing on the line at the exact same time. Because how many losses you have, you're not playing for anything that matters. For your pride and to keep this all from unraveling, you got to win some of these games. We don't play high-level winning football, folks. We do not. It looks like a small-timey, rinky-dink operation way too often compared to what I see when I look around the country, and I hate it. Special teams are pretty solid, though. Block punts, good returns. Uh, made most of your field goals, although you had to kick way too many of them because the offense blows. Brian Mace, a good hire. Better than Brian Poley, and I'll take it. Good job there. Uh, but this game, it's hit me at my patience point. Honestly, I, I don't have the patience anymore for this rinky-dink style football. We should add over 50 points by the half minimum, and I'm not kidding. Extra possessions, starting your possessions in the red zone, you still can't score. Get real. Pine is showing to be what somebody who has Pine's gifts is. Hit or miss, hot or cold, can't see over the line, sometimes perfect touch, sometimes no touch. You just don't know what you're going to get in it it makes you want to drive an ice pick in your face. Lindsay, listen, this guy's open a lot. Pine never sees him. He, o he overthrows Tyree wide open. Doesn't see Lindsay when he's wide open. This guy's so scared, and Kelly and Reese have it so ingrained in him to just go to Mayer. That's just it. That's just everything. It's just, he gets locked in. It's just, he's not a big-time quarterback, folks. He's not a big-time Division I quarterback. We do not have a big-time Division I offense, and it's upsetting. And I'm at the end of my rope. I've tried to be patient. I'm at the end of my rope with how this all looks and feels. I am. I have no more patience. I don't. And we have a lot of football to go. I'm concerned about how this is going to end. But, but if you've been around football a long time, you just know we're nowhere near playing real life good football. It's, it's upsetting. Mark, <clears throat> excuse me, Marcus needs to pull together the rest of this year anyway, anyhow, anyhow, just to get by. And then he has to get real serious about the areas holding this program back the most. If, if he feels there's nothing he could do in season now, scrap it through, fine. Like, get through this year in one piece. Then you have to take a serious look what's holding us back. Number one, the offense overall. Number two, quarterback recruiting development and retention. Number three, wide receiver depth. Those are the three things holding the program back the most right now. When I say the offense overall, that includes the coach, the scheme, the planning, the adjustments, the output, all of it. All of it. Mayor, this year, 44 catches, 526 yards, six touchdowns. All wide receivers, 50 catches, 652 yards, four touchdowns. It's an absolute disgrace. And it is an absolute shame that Michael Mayer's talent is being wasted on an empty year where it doesn't matter how good he is, we're not going anywhere with him anyways. Absolute waste. Waste. Good for him. Go to the NFL, son. Bad for us. Wasted talent. Just a waste. Pine, 14 for 28. 205. QBR, 36. Whatever. This is the quarterback line of somebody built like me playing quarterback in Notre Dame, folks. That's just what it's going to look like when you run that out there. And again, it is not his fault. He's trying his hardest. My point is someone with his skill set should never be offered a scholarship in Notre Dame. 
That's my point. Well, Johnny was a four-star. I don't know. What do you mean? But he was still slow, still not big, and still had a weak arm. Like, you could tell me he was a four-star. Fine. Even if he was, he was still slow, still didn't have a big arm, and wasn't big. What's the upside? Sounds to me like that's the best caliber of guy Reese and Kelly could get, so that's what they got. Not good enough. Not freaking good enough. Sorry, it ain't. So, Mayor, yeah, great job. But that at balls. Tyree getting overthrown for a wide open touchdown. Guys are open all the time downfield, but Pines locked in on Mayor. Like, whatever, man. Whatever, man. Rushing, it's so frustrating. Rushing, 223, five average. Diggs, big day, 130 yards on his own. Estimate, you're breaking my freaking art. You're breaking my art, dog. I want you to be the lead dog, be physical, mow people over. If you can't hold on to the ball, I can't, we can't do this. I love the way he plays, but if you can't hold on to the ball, you're in the doghouse. And it seems like he is. He only got three carries. When you put it on the ground, I can't have it, man. Very upsetting. Very upsetting. That's three now you just can't have from him. But it, 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 it's the offense left 30-something points out there. It's so damn frustrating. They cannot find a rhythm, stay in it, get in the red zone, and punch it in and just score like at a rate that a normal middle-of-the-road team could do. We can't even do it. Lost the turnover battle, 2-1. to one. On defense, you're like, whatever. We allowed 21. Okay, we won. 21's not a bad number. Like, whatever, let's keep it moving. Let me remind you, San Jose State and Air Force both just held these guys to seven points. And that was with their starting quarterback and wide receiver that we did not face. And those teams gave up seven to this team. We play them without their starting quarterback and best receiver. We give up 21. But these other, San Jose State and Air Force only give up seven, and then we're at home, we give up 21. I don't like it. Among all my complaints, that's not top on the list. But I still notice it and go, I don't like that. I still don't think the tackling's that sharp. You let the backup, backup quarterback spin around on you and run down to the goal line, get the first die. I just don't like it, man. UNLV had 146 rushing, 153 passing. It was just so blah. Just so blah. And I just have to ask, why can San Jose State and Air Force hold this team down more than we can? Like, why? I'm just, I'm getting agitated. When you start winning and it doesn't even register to you to be proud you have real large-scale issues, and that's where we're at, folks. And I want to be in a good mood, and I want to be bright side. And there is a bright side. The bright side is you can save your season in the minds of a lot of the fans and raise the morale of your group. If you find a way to raise up and beat Syracuse and Clemson and USC. But doing that seems like a monumental task where we're at right now. That we don't, we do not play high level football and it's upsetting. It's upsetting. Life is about to get very real, very, very fast. And you better figure something out. And if you can't in season, we need heads to roll where the program's deficient right after the USC game ends, win or loss. Marcus is going to have to protect his name in the name of the university, period. Bye.